Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin, and in this video, I'm focusing on five different stocks that are at 52-week lows right now. So these stocks, all of them I'm talking about here today, are at the lowest point they've been over the past year. So I'm asking myself, are they a good buy right now? We'll go through each one of these stocks. I'll give you my personal opinion, whether I think they're a good buy based on today's stock price. And this first video, watch to mine. Again, my name is Justin. I like to do videos on stocks, stock analysis, and the stock market in general. So if you like that kind of content, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you're kind of curious what type of stocks I hold in my current portfolio, I'll put a link somewhere up here. You can kind of click on that and go check out that video if you so desire. I am a value investor. I follow a lot of value investors that are out there, such as you know Phil Town, Howard Marks, Warren Buffett. You can kind of see the books here uh, behind me from different super investors there. So that's kind of my background, kind of investor that I am. So let's just kind of jump into this first stock and kind of go from there. All right. So the first stock up on the list is PayPal stock. Ticker symbol PYPL. The current stock price is around $57. The 52-week low is $56, so it's not far off from that. Now, PayPal operates a digital payment platform. Competition in the space has grown quite a bit over the past few years, including Apple getting into the space. Brand names include PayPal, Venmo, Zoom, HyperWallet, and Braintree. Current macroeconomic pain and uncertainty has hurt PayPal over the last year or so. Their total payment volume could continue to drop and push more pressure down on their margins. Currently, their 4 PE is around a 10. Some recent catalysts for the company include hiring a new CEO, Alex Chris, who was appointed from Intuit. And also, Venmo is now offered on Amazon, which should help sales moving forward. So what are my thoughts on PayPal? Well, I think the stock looks pretty darn cheap right now, especially with that 4 PE being around a 10. And analysts think the net income is going to roam 15% per year over the next few years. So that 4P of 10 looks really, really cheap. Uh, however, I do think that their moat is getting chipped away at from Apple and other competitors are out there. However, I think PayPal has opportunities to decrease some of their SG&A expenses, which should help their bottom line margin. And the company should be very, very profitable over the next several years. So I would give it a thumbs up in general that it'd be a good buy right now. Next stock on the list is Walgreens stock, ticker symbol WBA. Currently it trades around $21. The 52 week low is also $21. The stock is near 2009 prices. So you could actually have bought the stock 15 years ago, held today and made absolutely no money on it. Walgreens operates 13 thousand stores in more than nine countries. They employ over 325,000 employees. Now here recently, the CEO and CFO both walked out, which is not a good indication on where, you know, management thought the company should go versus say some of the board of directors. Now the dividend also looks like it may go down as well because it's yielding a very high premium compared to where their free cash flow and earnings have been. Now analysts don't believe Walgreens will get back to 2022 operating earnings until 2000. 26. Currently, their four PE is around a six. So what are my thoughts on Walgreens? Well, I have a lot of concerns around Walgreens, you know, with the two top executives just walking out the way they did. I know and understand some time management and the board don't necessarily agree uh, hand in hand. Now, I do think the CEO who came from Starbucks seemed like she was a good fit for the company. Uh, and I liked her coming in. So it was disappointing to see her kind of walking out the way she did. I also think Walgreens doesn't have much of a moat. In fact, I think they have competitors that have a better moat than them, including CVS. If you think about it, really the best breadwinner that uh, Walgreens has is their pharmacy, but uh, they're also a very high cost for consumers to buy products from their pharmacy, and they have cheaper routes they can go to, whether it's Walgreens or even Costco, or excuse me, Walmart or Costco, uh, or some of those other places as well. So uh, Walgreens, to me, I would be very concerned buying into it, even at 
today's prices, even though it's dropped so much, until the fundamentals actually get better and you see where the company stabilizes right now. So my personal opinion is a thumbs down right now, now on Walgreens. But we'll kind of see how they go going forward. DG. Currently, the stock is trading around $103. The 52-week low is $101. Dollar General operates 19,000 stores across 47 different states in the United States. The company focuses on smaller towns and cities with little competition. Company has been dealing with an increase in shrinkage with higher theft and inflation pressures. Analysts believe the company's EPS growth is significantly going to slow down. The company has seen their EPS grow more than 15% per year over the last several years, but that is expected to drop to only 4% per year over the next several years. Their current forward PE is 13. So what are my thoughts on Dollar General in, in, in general? Uh, my thought is they have a very, very good moat overall. They focus on towns and cities that are smaller where there's not a whole lot of competition. So they're not going to be going against, say, like a Walmart or a Target. In fact, most of the cities that they're in have 20,000 or fewer people in them, but they still reach a good portion of the United States in general. Now, I do believe that Dollar General is going to continue to hurt on the top line and especially in the bottom line with shrinkage, potentially even you know theft that's going on right now and also inflation pressure as well. So I do expect over the next couple of quarters that Dollar General will continue to hurt. But if you're an investor, like a long-time investor that you're willing to buy and hold and kind of go through the ups and downs of the pain, over the next few quarters, I do believe that Dollar General is a very good buy here today. And I do think analysts have got this one wrong when they think that they're only going to grow in the mid single digits on the bottom line. I don't think that's going to be the case. So I give Dollar General a thumbs up right now on a buy. All right. Now, the fourth company I want to talk about here in this video is McCormick, ticker symbol MK. C. The current price is $64. The 52-week low is $62. The company is known for adding flavor to your foods through different types of seasonings. The stock is a staple name among value investors and dividend investors. The company has been encountering sales and margin issues, however. Their SG&A expenses recently grew by double digits, but their sales in the Americas only grew 1%, while Asia Pacific dropped by more than 15%. The current forward PE for the company is a 23. Now, analysts expect the company to grow the top line of only about 4% per year over the next few years, with EPS increasing by more than double at 9% per year. Now, this is somewhat similar to how the company has performed over the past several decades. So what are my thoughts on McCormick just in general? Well, I think the company's operating margins are absolutely incredible. I mean, they've been around the 15 to 18% range with gross margins being around 35 to 40%. So their SG&A expenses in general are very, very low compared to the industry and a lot of other industries in general. It's been a company for a long time where investors have been willing to pay a premium for this company. In fact, if you think about it, if they're 4P right now, is a 23. You can imagine what it's been and other times in the past when their stock has actually been even more. So the market in general has been willing to pay a premium for McCormick, which concerns me a lot with their EPS potentially only growing 9% per year uh, over the next several years. But having the Ford P at a 23, that means you're paying a huge premium. If there's ever a point where the market actually uh, pays uh, a normalized type P for this type company, uh, I could see the stock dropping um, by almost half uh, in general. So my personal feeling is that I would not not believe that this is a value right now based on today's stock price, even though the stock has dropped almost 25% year to date. It's just too high. It's just too much of premium right now, even after this fall. So I would give McCormick a thumbs down right now to buy. All right. Last but not least on this list is Citigroup, ticker symbol 
C. The current price is around $40 a share. The 52-week low is $38. Now, Citigroup is the fourth largest bank in the U.S. The stock has not been good to investors over the last decade. In fact, the stock is down 20% from its highs in 2014. So if you bought this stock almost 10 years ago, held today, you have a 20% loss. So obviously not good. The company stock has yielded some of the worst return on intangible common equity among the five biggest banks in the U.S. However, the current CEO has a strategy to improve their bottom line. They have identified 13 markets where they are shutting down bank branches. These markets yielded the lowest margins for the business, so this should improve their margins going forward. The revenue should drop, but the bottom line margins should grow. Currently, their forward PE is around a 7%. So what are my thoughts on Citigroup stock? Well, I think it's kind of the opposite of McCormick where the investors or stock market has been willing to pay a premium for McCormick. They are not willing to pay a premium for Citigroup. And I think where McCormick may come back down to earth at some point, I think the Citigroup stock has the potential of actually going the other way in a positive realm. So even though they've been in the worst performing banks over the last 10 years, I think with the new CEO and where they're trending, I think the stock has a chance to double over the next year or two if they can execute correctly on their current strategy. In fact, the current book value per share for Citigroup is the cheapest it has been in the last 10 years. So I think there is a lot of value to Citigroup stock right now. Now I do understand banks in general have been hurting and in, when, in high inflation environments that we're seeing right now, it doesn't help banks, but I do think Citigroup is at a very good valuation. If you're a long-term investor willing to buy and hold, I do think it's gonna perform very well long-term. So I would give Citigroup a thumbs up to buy at this time. So those are my thoughts on the five stocks I want to share here today. So just to quickly summarize, so I do think that Citigroup, Dollar General, and PayPal do look like a good buy right now, where I believe that McCormick and Walgreens don't look like they're a good buy in the current economic uh, conditions and kind of where the stock is right now and potentially where it's going in the future. But I'd be curious from you guys, do you believe me? Do you agree with me? Uh, do you feel indifferently? Let me know down in the comment section. Let me know about another stock that you're looking to buy that might be at the 52 week low. I would love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the other side. Take care and God bless.